Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue. This podcast is meant to bring hope and inspiration to your day. You and I have been born into a unique time in history. The command to guard our heart and mind has never been more vital to our mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Let's guide each other on this journey. If you have a hero heart story from your corner of the world that you would like to share on this podcast, please send it to the email address, mindsetmatterspodcast, numeral one, at gmail.com. If you know of someone who would benefit from uplifting content, please share this podcast. Please visit our website, mindsetmatters.buzzsprout.com. Now please join me for an uplifting hero heart story. Gather round, history enthusiasts and animal lovers, for an untold tale of bravery and loyalty that transcends time and species. In the heart of the Korean War, amidst the chaos and conflict, one unlikely hero emerged, Sergeant Reckless, the courageous warhorse. Join us on a captivating journey through the life and adventures of this remarkable equine warrior, whose unwavering dedication to her fellow soldiers forged a bond that would become the stuff of legends. Get ready to be moved, inspired, and deeply touched by the extraordinary story of Sergeant Reckless, a war horse like no other. Welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of one such individual, or animal. This is episode six, The Courage to be Loyal, the Hero Heart of Sergeant Reckless, the War Horse. Settle in for a gripping tale of courage, resilience, and unwavering faith. Meet Staff Sergeant Reckless, a remarkable warhorse with an intriguing tale that unfolded between 1948 and May 13th of 1968. This distinguished equine held an official rank within the United States military, a distinction quite uncommon in the animal kingdom. Sergeant Reckless was a striking and distinctive chestnut-colored mare, and her appearance was notable for several characteristics. She had a rich chestnut coat, which is reddish-brown color. This coat color is common among many horse breeds and can vary in shade from a light, almost reddish hue to a darker, deeper brown. Sergeant Reckless's chestnut coat was a mid-range shade. One of her most prominent features was a white blaze on her forehead. A blaze is a vertical white marking on a horse's face, typically running down the center of the forehead. This blaze likely added to her unique and recognizable appearance. Sergeant Reckless had three white stockings, which are white markings on her legs that extended up from her hooves to varying heights. These white stockings contrasted sharply with her chestnut coat, making her legs particularly eye-catching. She was relatively small in stature, standing at around 14 hands high. In the world of horse measurements, a hand is equivalent to four inches, so she stood approximately 56 inches or 142 centimeters tall at her withers, which is the highest point on a horse's back. Sergeant Reckless weighed approximately 900 pounds or 410 kilograms. This weight was relatively modest for a horse, reflecting her compact build. While primarily of Mongolian breeding, she displayed some features reminiscent of horses with thoroughbred lineage. This might have included certain aspects of her head shape, which added to her distinctive appearance. Born from Mongolian horse breeding, 
Reckless came into the world as the offspring of a racehorse dam, and a fateful turn of events she was acquired in October 1952 for a mere $250, which, when adjusted for inflation, amounts to approximately $2,800 in today's currency. The story behind her purchase is touching, as she was bought from a Korean stable boy working at the Seoul racetrack. The young man's motivation for parting with his special mare was nothing short of heartwarming. He needed the funds to purchase an artificial leg for his sister. Reckless came into her own at the time of the Korean War. Let's learn some background on this conflict. The Korean War, often referred to as the Forgotten War, was a tumultuous conflict that erupted on the Korean Peninsula from 1950 to 1953. It was a pivotal chapter in the early days of the Cold War and left an indelible mark on the world. The stage was set with the division of Korea along the 38th parallel after World War II, with the Soviet Union controlling the North and the United States governing the South. Ideological differences deepened, leading to the emergence of two separate governments, Communist North Korea and Democratic South Korea. The war began with a shocking surprise when North Korean forces, led by Kim Il-sung, launched a full-scale invasion of the South on June 25, 1950. Their aim was to reunify the peninsula under communist rule. The United Nations, under the leadership of the United States, responded swiftly, forming a coalition of nations to support South Korea. The conflict was marked by dramatic twists and turns, from the desperate defense of the Pusan perimeter by UN forces to the audacious Incheon landing led by General Douglas MacArthur, which turned the tide in favor of the UN. However, the war took a grave turn when Chinese forces entered the fray on the side of North Korea, transforming it into a brutal and protracted struggle. Battles raged across the Korean peninsula, with both sides enduring immense sacrifices. The war eventually settled into a grueling stalemate along the 38th parallel, resulting in countless casualties and a devastated landscape. After three years of arduous negotiations, an armistice agreement was signed in 1953, ending the active fighting and establishing a demilitarized zone that still divides the two Koreas to this day. However, a formal peace treaty was never reached, leaving the two nations technically at war. The Korean War's legacy is profound. It left a divided Korea, with North Korea remaining an isolated and repressive regime, while South Korea emerged as a vibrant democracy and economic powerhouse. The conflict had broader implications as well, influencing Cold War dynamics and U.S. foreign policy in Asia. Though it is often overshadowed by other conflicts, the Korean War's impact endures. It serves as a stark reminder of the human cost of war, the complexities of international diplomacy, and the enduring quest for peace on the Korean Peninsula, a quest that continues to shape geopolitics in the region to this day. To our story. In the crisp October of 1952, Lieutenant Eric Peterson found himself facing a challenging task in the rugged mountainous terrain where his platoon operated. The recoilless rifle platoon of the 5th Marine Regiment required a reliable pack animal capable of shouldering the burden of up to nine hefty 24 pound shells crucial for supplying the recoilless rifles that defined their firepower. With the green light from Colonel Eustace Smoke, Peter Simmon embarked on a mission to secure the perfect equine partner for his Marines. The very next day, on October 26, 1952, Peterson, accompanied by Sergeant Williard Berry and Corporal Philip Carter, set out on a memorable journey. They hopped into a sturdy jeep, hauling a trailer, and headed straight for the bustling Seoul racetrack. 
It was a moment tinged with both hesitation and necessity, as Peterson dug into his own pockets to cover the cost of the horse. The seller, Kim Huck Moon, known affectionately as Moon, reluctantly parted ways with his horse he had come to call Flame. Emotions ran deep and tears welled up as Flame began her new journey under the Marine Corps banner. The renaming of this extraordinary mare from Flame to Reckless carried profound significance. It was not just a simple change of name. It was a nod to the fearless spirit of those who wielded the recoilless rifle, a weapon that demanded audacity and courage. With this transformation, a legendary partnership was forged, and the saga of Sergeant Reckless had begun. At the heart of Sergeant Reckless's remarkable journey, there were a few key individuals who formed an unbreakable bond with this extraordinary mare. Platoon Gunnery Sergeant Joseph Latham emerged as her primary trainer and confidant. Their connection went far beyond the realm of military duty, as they shared a profound understanding that transcended words. Private First Class Monroe Coleman stepped into the role of her primary caretaker, tending to her needs and ensuring her well-being day in and day out. His dedication was a testament to the deep respect and affection that grew between the men and this horse. However, the circle of individuals responsible for Reckless extended further. Lieutenant Bill Riley and Sergeant Elmer Lively also played pivotal roles in her training and care, forming a team committed to her success and safety. To enhance her ability to fulfill her crucial role as a pack animal, Lieutenant Eric Peterson went the extra mile. He had his wife send a pack saddle all the way from their home in California, ensuring that Reckless was equipped for the challenging task that lay ahead. In the world of military service, even heroes need health care, and Reckless was no exception. Navy hospitalman First Class George Doc Mitchell, a dedicated member of the Recoilless Rifle Platoon's medical corpsman, took on the responsibility of providing her with the majority of her medical care, ensuring she remained in the best possible health for her demanding duties. Together, this close-knit team of dedicated individuals formed the backbone of Reckless's incredible journey, forging a bond of trust, care, and camaraderie that would go down in history. Within the rugged crucible of military life, Reckless, guided by the Marines, embarked on a unique curriculum of battlefield survival. Platoon Gunnery Sergeant Joseph Latham, in particular, became her mentor, instilling in her the essential skills to navigate the harsh realities of war. With unwavering determination, Reckless learned the art of avoiding entanglement in the treacherous barbed wire that often littered the battleground. When the ominous cry of, Incoming! pierced the air, she knew precisely what to do, dash for the nearest bunker, her well-practiced response to the imminent danger. To the platoon, this rigorous training became affectionately known as her hoof training and hoof camp, a testament to the unique blend of discipline and camaraderie that defined their journey together. Initially, Reckless found her home in a pasture near the encampment, but it wasn't long before she became an integral part of the unit. Her gentle disposition and remarkable rapport with the troops opened doors to unprecedented privileges. She was granted the freedom to roam the camp at will, often sauntering into tents without hesitation. In the warmth of comradeship, she even shared sleeping quarters with the troops, occasionally nestling beside the comforting stove in Latham's tent on chilly nights. Reckless possessed a palate as diverse as her talents, delighting the platoon with her willingness to consume scrambled eggs, Coca-Cola, and even the occasional beer. Her voracious appetite was legendary, and food left unattended around her would swiftly disappear. 
she displayed a penchant for an eclectic range of edibles, from bacon and buttered toast to chocolate bars, hard candy, shredded wheat, peanut butter sandwiches, and mashed potatoes. Yet, even in the midst of indulgence, Navy hospitalman, first-class George Doc Mitchell, the platoon's medical corpsman, offered guidance cautioning against more than two bottles of Coke a day to safeguard her well-being. But Recklix's appetite was not limited to the culinary world. She once devoured her horse blanket and even managed to swallow a substantial sum, a jaw-dropping $30 worth, of Latham's hard-earned poker chips. Her boundless spirit and audacious palate made her a beloved and unforgettable presence amidst the trials of war. Reckless's fiery initiation into the brutal theater of war unfolded amidst the harsh landscapes of Headley's Crotch, nestled near the villages of Changden and Quachchin. On this fateful day, she bore the weight of six formidable, recoilless rifle shells, each one a testament to the gravity of her mission. The first thunderous blast of the recoilless rifle shook the very ground beneath her. For a moment, Reckless seemed to defy gravity itself, soaring into the air with all four hooves momentarily leaving their earthly anchor. As she descended, trembling with shock, it was the reassuring presence of her handler, Coleman, that steadied her trembling nerves. The second eruption of gunfire merely drew a dismissive snort from her, and as the mission progressed, a remarkable transformation overcame her. By day's end, she stood among the troops, her demeanor calm, and her curiosity piqued by an abandoned helmet liner, a testament to her unyielding spirit in the face of adversity. Indeed, Reckless's journey was marked by rapid learning and an uncanny adaptability. When tasked with mastering new delivery routes, she proved herself a quick study. After a mere handful of guided trips, she confidently embarked on solo missions, her memory and instincts serving as unerring guides through the treacherous terrain. However, amidst the discipline of wartime, one memorable incident stood out. In early December 1952, an unauthorized rider brazenly defied the standing order not to mount reckless. This act led to an audacious sprint through a perilous minefield, a moment that held its breath. Miraculously, the brave mare emerged unscathed, a testament to her spirit and luck that seemed to favor. Carrying 386 recoilless rounds, weighing in at over 9,000 pounds, she bore the weight of her comrade's firepower, each trip burdened with four to eight 24-pound shells. Covering an awe-inspiring distance of over 35 miles within those relentless 24 hours, her determination knew no bounds. The entirety of the Battle of Vegas spanned three grueling days, a testament to the enduring spirit of those who fought alongside her. Yet, Reckless's valor was not without its sacrifices. She bore the physical scars of battle, wounded twice during this relentless conflict. Shrapnel struck her over the left eye, a stark reminder of the peril that surrounded her, and another injury marred her left flank. These wounds, however, were badges of honor, a testament to her unwavering commitment. In the aftermath of her extraordinary performance during the Battle of Vegas Hill, Reckless received a promotion that symbolized the depths of her bravery and dedication. She ascended to the rank of corporal, an honor well-deserved and a testament to her unyielding spirit in the face of adversity. When the chaos of the front lines temporarily subsided, Reckless seamlessly transitioned to an essential role, carrying a different kind of cargo for the platoon. Her incredible strength and adaptability shone brightly when tasked with the responsibility of stringing telephone wire. Strapped with reels of wire on her pack, she would unfurl it, and as she trod, accomplishing the work of an astonishing twelve men on foot. Her contribution was nothing short of remarkable, ensuring crucial communication lines remained intact in the most challenging of circumstances. Reckless's trailblazing spirit extended even further. She made history as the first horse in the Marine Corps to participate in an amphibious landing, 
This historic moment occurred as the 5th Marine Regiment moved from Camp Casey to Incheon, with intentions to embark on amphibious landings hundreds of miles to the south. However, their plans faced an unexpected hurdle when the commanding officer of the transport ship hesitated to welcome Reckless aboard his pristine vessel. This ship had garnered accolades for being the cleanest ship for two consecutive years. The impasse was resolved only when the Marines presented the loading plan, complete with the commanding officer's approval, which explicitly listed Reckless and her equipment. Once at sea, she grappled with seasickness during the initial part of the voyage, resulting in some untimely messes on the ship's pristine decks. But as time passed, she adapted to the rhythmic motion of the ship, ultimately overcoming her discomfort. Under the command of Randolph M. Pate, the leader of the 1st Marine Division, Reckless was poised to receive an extraordinary battlefield promotion. In a formal ceremony that left no detail spared, including a grand reviewing stand, this remarkable horse was elevated from corporal to sergeant. The date, April 10, 1954, holds special significance, occurring several months after the war had concluded. The solemnness of the occasion was punctuated by a vivid symbol of her newfound rank, a resplendent red and gold blanket adorned with distinguished insignia. But Reckless's journey through the ranks didn't stop there. On August 31, 1959, at the illustrious Camp Pendleton in California, she experienced yet another momentous promotion. This time it was Pate, now serving as the Commandant of the Marine Corps, who personally presided over the ceremony. The magnitude of the occasion was beyond ordinary, marked by a thunderous 19-gun salute and a majestic parade of 1,700 Marines hailing from her very own wartime unit. It was a salute to her unwavering courage and the unique bond she shared with her comrades. Reckless stood as a trailblazer, a pioneering example of an animal ascending to official rank within a branch of the United States military. Her story continues to inspire, reminding us all that bravery knows no bounds, and that even the unlikeliest heroes can rise to the occasion when duty calls. In recognition of her unwavering dedication and exceptional service to the Marine Corps, Reckless received a distinguished array of accolades, each a testament to her extraordinary contributions. Her bravery on the battlefield during the Battle of Vegas earned her not one, but two Purple Hearts, badges of honor that bore witness to her wounds sustained in the line of duty. These Purple Hearts were tangible symbols of her resilience and valor. But the list of honors didn't end there. Reckless proudly wore the Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, a recognition of her steadfast commitment to duty and discipline. The Presidential Unit Citation, adorned with a bronze star, celebrated her unit's exceptional achievements in the face of adversity. Her awards extended beyond American soil. The National Defense Service Medal, the Korean Service Medal, and the United Nations Korean Medal paid tribute to her international service and the pivotal role she played in the Korean War. The Navy Unit Commendation acknowledged her unit's collective excellence. Among her cherished adornments, Reckless also bore the Republic of Korea Presidential Unit Citation, a symbol of the deep respect and gratitude of the Korean people for her contributions. Her horse blanket became a canvas of honor, bedecked with these remarkable awards, a visual testament to her unyielding spirit. And as if this weren't enough, she proudly displayed the French Furrigier, a cherished decoration earned by the 5th Marines in World War I. Reckless's collection of honors was not just a reflection of her bravery, but a tribute to the enduring bond she shared with the Marines and the indelible mark she left on history. She was a true hero, draped in the accolade she had earned through unwavering valor and dedication. A captivating story in the Saturday Evening Post, published on April 17, 1954, had an extraordinary ripple effect that would span oceans and continents, as Reckless was still stationed in Korea at the time. 
This compelling article sparked a groundswell of support among passionate Americans, all advocating for the Marine Corps to bring reckless to the United States. Among those moved by the story was Stan Koppel, a high-ranking executive at Pacific Transport Lines. His heart touched by Reckless's tale, he made an extraordinary offer to transport Reckless free of charge aboard one of his company's ships from Yokohama to the bustling port of San Francisco. The transition to her new home was nothing short of a grand spectacle. Prior to her departure for the United States, a ceremony of great pomp and circumstance unfolded, complete with the melodic strains of a band. This memorable event took place during halftime at a football game pitting the Marine Corps against the Army, symbolizing the indomitable spirit of the Marines. Reckless embarked on the next leg of her incredible journey, leaving the Korean soil she had come to know so well and soaring through the skies aboard a 1st Marine aircraft wing transport plane bound for Japan. From there, she set sail on the SS Pacific Transport on October 22, 1954, with the destination etched in the annals of history, San Francisco, a city of dreams. However, this journey was not without its challenges. A formidable typhoon loomed on the horizon, casting a shadow of uncertainty over her voyage. During the tempest's furious fury, Reckless fell victim to seasickness again, a humble reminder of the turbulent seas that she braved. At one dramatic juncture, the storm's relentless assault sent her tumbling from her stall onto the unforgiving deck, a harrowing ordeal that occurred near the voyage's end. Through it all, Reckless's resilience and the unwavering support of her caretakers remained steadfast, a testament to the indomitable spirit that had carried her through battlefields and across oceans. Reckless's journey to the United States was marked by a series of challenges, but she arrived safely on the shores of San Francisco. The U.S. Customs Bureau presented only a minor hurdle. However, the United States Department of Agriculture posed a more formidable obstacle. They insisted on conducting a comprehensive medical examination and lab tests before allowing her to disembark from the ship. Unfortunately, this bureaucratic procedure threatened to delay her appearance as the guest of honor at a marine banquet, an event eagerly anticipated by both Reckless and her admirers. Faced with this dilemma, the Marines wasted no time in reaching out to the Agriculture Department officials in Washington, D.C., a compromise was struck. Reckless would be allowed off the ship after her blood was drawn for necessary lab tests. However, there was an unspoken understanding that if the results were indicative of glandures or dorine, two potentially serious equine diseases, her fate would be grim, either destruction or a return to Japan. Among those who had come to know and cherish Reckless during her service, this turn of events was met with outrage. They perceived it as an affront to her honor. This remarkable mayor had earned their unwavering respect, and they were determined to protect her legacy. In a touching display of devotion, Reckless chose the night before her arrival to indulge in a familiar habit, munching on her horse blanket. In response, a new one, adorned with ribbons and insignia, was hurriedly crafted just in time for her grand disembarkment. Finally, on November 10th, 1954, a date that coincidentally marked the anniversary of the Marine Corps creation, Reckless set foot on American soil. For the Grand Marine Corps birthday ball held on that very day, she took a surprising journey, ascending in an elevator. Once inside, she celebrated her own unique way, indulging in both cake and the decorative flower arrangements a fitting celebration for a hero of her stature. After her triumphant arrival in the United States, Reckless found herself briefly in the care of Lieutenant Pedersen's family, a heartwarming interlude that hinted at a quiet chapter in her extraordinary life. But Destiny had other plans for this remarkable mare. Her true and enduring home would be among the 5th Marines, 1st Marine Division, where she would carve out a place in history at Camp Pendleton, becoming an indelible part of Marine lore. 
Reckless's story continued to capture the hearts of Americans, and on October 22, 1955, a second captivating article about her appeared in the Saturday Evening Post. These articles, along with the book Reckless, Pride of the Marines, published in 1955, were penned by none other than Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Gear, the commander of the 2nd Battalion. Gear's meticulous notes during the war had provided the foundation for these poignant accounts of her remarkable journey. Her fame transcended the written word, as Reckless made several highly anticipated public appearances, including a memorable guest spot on Arc Linkletter's popular show House Party. However, her schedule was not without its challenges. An invitation from Ed Sullivan to appear on his iconic show, The Ed Sullivan Show, had to be regrettably canceled, all due to the unpredictable forces of nature. A looming typhoon like a fickle twist of fate disrupted her plans, prompting the cancellation of her scheduled appearance on November 7. In a bid to secure her presence, Sullivan had even offered to cover the costs of her expedited arrival right after her delayed November 5 debut. But destiny had other plans. In the end, Reckless never graced Sullivan's famous stage, a story of missed opportunity that would forever be part of her legendary journey, celebrated not just for her appearances, but for the indomitable spirit that had carried her through the trials of war and the glamour of stardom. At Camp Pendleton, Reckless received the royal treatment, her every need meticulously attended to, as if she were a VIP of the highest order. The Marine Corps was steadfast in their resolve to shield her from any form of commercial exploitation, ensuring that her dignity and legacy remained intact. During her time there, Reckless became not only a symbol of valor, but also a mother. She proudly bore four foals on the hallowed grounds of Camp Pendleton. Among them were Colts Fearless, born in 1957, and Dauntless, who arrived in 1959. One of her offspring, Chesty, bore a name that echoed with significance. He was named in honor of Chesty Puller, a revered Marine Corps Lieutenant General, and the most decorated United States Marine in history. In honor of his magnitude was a testament to the profound respect and admiration Reckless had earned from those who served alongside her. But every hero's journey eventually leads to retirement, and Reckless's was no exception. On November 10, 1960, she stepped away from active service, bidding farewell with full military honors. In acknowledgment of her years of unwavering service, the Marine Corps ensured that her twilight years would be comfortable, providing her with free quarters and sustenance in lieu of retirement pay, as detailed in Marine Corps documents, a fitting tribute to a true American hero. As the years passed, Reckless, like any aging hero, began to feel the weight of time. Arthritis crept into her back, a reminder of the battles she had fought and the miles she had traveled. Yet, she soldiered on, her spirit undiminished. But on a fateful day, May 13, 1968, tragedy struck as she stumbled and fell into a cruel embrace, barbed wire. Despite the efforts to treat her wounds and alleviate her pain, her valiant heart ultimately succumbed, marking the end of her remarkable journey. At the time of her passing, she was estimated to be between 19 and 20 years old. Her legacy has lived on. A plaque and a photograph stand as a solemn commemoration of her life and service at the Camp Pendleton Stables, a place that had been her home and sanctuary. But her story extended beyond the stables and battlefields. On November 10, 1989, the Aqueduct Racetrack in New York paid tribute to her memory by designating the first race as the Sergeant Reckless, ensuring that her name would echo in the world of horse racing. In a testament to the profound impact she had on those who know her story, Reckless was recognized by Life magazine in 1997 as one of America's 100 all-time heroes, a distinction that immortalized her as a true icon of courage and devotion. A breathtaking monument, a creation of sculptor Jocelyn Russell, was unveiled on a momentous day in July of 2013, 
amidst the solemnity of Semper Fidelis Memorial Park at the National Museum of the Marine Corps. It was a day that preceded the 60th anniversary of the Korean War, a fitting tribute to a war horse whose legacy had etched itself into the annals of history. The statue stood tall, capturing the essence of Reckless in all her glory, burdened with ammunition shells and other combat equipment, a symbol of her unwavering dedication. Within the very base of the statue lay a lock of her tail hair, a poignant reminder of the living legend she had been. Upon the statue's plaque, the words of Sergeant Harold Wadley, a fellow warrior who had served alongside her, resonated with a profound truth, quote, The spirit of her loneliness and her loyalty, in spite of the danger, was something else to behold. Hurting, determined, and alone, that's the image I have imprinted in my head and heart forever, unquote. These words were not just a tribute, but a reflection of her spirit that had been the heart and soul of Reckless. She would forever be etched in the hearts and minds of those who beheld her. The legacy of Sergeant Reckless stretches far and wide, with five additional monuments bearing the skilled craftsmanship of artist Jocelyn Russell. Each of these tributes stands as a testament to her enduring heroism. At Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton in Oceanside, California, a monument was unveiled on October 26, 2016, preserving her memory in the very heart of her former home. The Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington, Kentucky, became home to another grand monument, unveiled on May 12, 2018. Here, amidst the rolling hills and the echoes of hooves, Reckless's spirit found its rightful place. The National Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame in Fort Worth, Texas, honored her memory with a tribute unveiled on November 13, 2019, an emblem of her status as an icon, transcending the realms of gender. Barrington Hills Farm in Barrington Hills, Illinois, became a sanctuary for a monument dedicated in September 2019, an emblem of her enduring legacy that graced the heartland. The World Equestrian Center in Ocala, Florida, became home to another masterpiece in December 2020, a monument that resonated with the grace and power of Reckless herself. These monuments, akin to the one that stands at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, serve as solemn reminders of a hero whose spirit could not be confined by time or place. And not to be forgotten, a memorial at Yinchon Gorompogu History Park in South Korea, near the hallowed battlefield of Outpost Vegas, was dedicated in 2018, an eternal flame of gratitude in the land where her legend was forged. If you would like to take a deeper dive into her story, I recommend these books. Sergeant Reckless, America's War Horse, written by Robin Hutton and General James Amos. This book is a New York Times bestseller. Another book is written by Tom Clavin, Reckless, the Racehorse Who Became a Marine Corps Hero. And a teacher's pick book for kids is called War Horse by Michael Morpurgo. And it's geared towards ages 10 through 12 years old. I hope you enjoyed this story. I really did as a, as a horse lover. Um, this story really touched my heart. I'm going to make myself a coffee and I hope you'll do the same or get a beverage of your choice and meet me at Coffee Corner. Hey everybody, welcome back and welcome to Coffee Corner. Thank you for taking your time to join me. I'm so grateful to have this family of listeners. Welcome to our new listeners from Canada. So today I'm trying a coffee um, my sister sent me that has quote healthy stuff in it. Um, but um, it's got lion's mane and chaga and mushroom powder and it's supposed to help with focus um, so I'll let you know how that goes if I, if I'm feeling focused in a couple of days. Um, I was kind of skeptical, skeptical about the taste, um, but it actually tastes good. It's kind of, um, earthy and smooth. It's kind of nice. What did you think about 
the episode today. Um, I'm a horse lover. I, you know, I would say I'm an amateur rider. Um, I just love the animal. I think there's something very unique and special about them. Um, and my daughter who has special, special needs has written therapeutic, um, riding horses. And, um, I just think they're such wonderful animals. I felt like the words on Reckless's plaque, um, under the statue where the sergeant said he remembers her for her spirit of loneliness and loyalty. Um, ah, that just made me sad. Um, and the picture on one of the books that has been written just shows, you know, a horse all by herself with the recoilless ammo on her back. Um, and you can just picture her alone trudging for miles and miles, you know, with a lot of noise and, things going on all around her. Um, I'm just glad she got spoiled in her retirement days. That made me feel better that she kind of really got spoiled and treated well those last days in her life. Um, and I thought the funny parts about her liking Coca-Cola and eggs and beer <laughs> reminded me of episode three about Wojtek, the bear. I just thought that was a, kind of a funny common thread between the two that they kind of started liking apparently what their comrades liked. Um, I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, how is everyone doing? Kind of uh, a sobering week that we've had. Um, for those of you who may be listening uh, at the beginning of the podcast or out of order, this past week we witnessed human atrocity that is really reminiscent of depravity on the level seen during the Holocaust. Um, I've always wondered with the Holocaust, you know, how does a human being come to a place where they can put another human being in an incinerator? And you just think, how, how does that happen? And then just this past week, we see how one human being can take another human being's baby and kill it. Um, it just, my mind can't wrap around it. And certainly my heart can't accept it. Um, you know, it was shocking. It was brazen, uh, just a stunning attack by the Hamas, um, on innocent people. And, and now that war has started more innocent people will, will, uh, get caught in the crossfires. Um, and this has left so many people feeling, you know, just shattered and discombobulated and shaken. And, and I think it leaves all of us feeling vulnerable. Um, I just feel like this is a moment, you know, to hold close the people that we love and to hold space and, um, to learn and listen. Um, a civil rights activist, I was looking at this quote the other day, um, said our most powerful response to the horror in Israel and Palestine is to refuse to surrender our humanity. Um, and I have to admit, I had a moment of facing the temptation to surrender my humanity because when I watch those things that are done to innocent women and children and elderly, no matter where they live in the world. Um, I just become enraged and, um, it just seems like the innocent and the, the women and children are always suffering at the hands of war. Um, and it just made me feel helpless and thinking about, you know, well, what, what can I do? Um, and I thought, well, first I can be exceptionally compassionate with others around me in my circle of the world, um, and acknowledge that people are shouldering heavy burdens. Um, there's just a lot going on in the world. It's, it's a strange time. Um, people are struggling in many ways, financially, emotionally. Um, so I can show them love and compassion and understanding. That's one thing I can do. Um, another thing I strive to do is to listen and learn more, to try to understand others the way they think, their point of view, and their culture, um, so that I, I can just get an understanding. And um, I've been thinking a lot about the, the sad state of America these days, and I know we have some listening, a lot listening, to the podcasts that don't live in the United States, but... Um, 
we're kind of a divided nation. I don't think that's any secret. Um, and to me, this moment serves as an opportunity for us to unite, not just for the sake of our allies, but for our own well-being. Um, we need to project strength and stability, and we need to be unified and um, stop tearing ourselves apart. Our family and friends um, rely on us, and we need to stand together um, and be dependable for ourselves and for others. Um, they're just things that are bigger, right, than uh, politics and, um, you know, social issues. There really are the, the basic human right to being able to live safely. Um, so we need to come together and unify and, and do better. Um, lastly, I can get on my knees and pray for this world and pray that those who have not already chosen to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, um, make that choice. Now's the time, um, not to frighten anyone, but I truly believe that uh, the clock is ticking for all of us. Um, light is being shown on good and evil, and it's just, it's time to choose which side are you going to be on? Um, and um, the invitation is to all uh, to come to Jesus and and um, be an agent of change for good. I would and uh, uh, thinking along all of these things, I thought about the podcast and I wanted to change the format a little bit by adding a, a piece on prayer requests. So please let me know by email if you have a prayer request and if you would like it shared on the podcast or um, if it's meant only for me um, because I am always here for you um, to support in any way I can and prayer is certainly something I would be honored to do. So please write in to Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com that's M-I-N-D-S-E-T M-A-T T E R S P O D C A S T one at gmail.com. Um, I encourage honest dialogue. Ask me anything you would like. Um, I will be completely honest and um, share what's on my heart and mind. Um, and this is a safe environment for, for honest dialogue to happen. Um, so feel free to send reflections, your hero heart stories, prayer requests, um, and clean jokes. <laughs> Those are always good too. Um, before I leave us, we have a gratitude quote of the day. This comes to us from Martin Luther King Jr. It says, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Please join me for our upcoming podcast. The next one will not be on Elizabeth El Elliot as planned. I've moved her up to allow me more time to research. Um, so the next one will be on Bessie Coleman. I'm excited about that one. Um, and the one after that will be on Louis Zamperini. I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.